welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. A new year at the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office offers the promise of new achievements. State Treasurer John Perdue is here with us today to give us updates on the programs of the Treasurer's Office and talk about the upcoming year. But first, we want to talk a little bit about an annual event hosted by the Treasurer's Office that offers students in West Virginia a chance to boost their college savings. The Smart 529 Educational Savings Program just kicked off its 13th annual When I Grow Up Essay Contest. This is a statewide contest, and this year the Treasurer visited Chamberlain Elementary School in Charleston to announce the contest kickoff. The contest gives elementary students around the state a chance to dream about their future and to enter for a chance to win college savings that will someday help turn that dream into a reality. Treasurer Purdue, thanks so much for being with us today. Oh, it's great to be with you. Well, I know that When I Grow Up Essay Contest is really one of your favorite <clears> events. <throat> thanks for sitting down today to talk a little bit about that. And for those who may not be familiar with this contest, just give us an overview of how it works. Well, it's our 529, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? contest. You write a small essay. It's kindergarten through the fifth grade. We have 15 regional winners of $500 and we also have a $5,000, total $5,000 winner uh, when they come to Charleston uh, celebrating uh, win the wins of the 15 regional winners. And then we also have a teacher uh, award of $2,500. And But the most important thing, our focus is on the children and students that are writing the essay of kindergarten through uh, the fifth grade and, and what they're dreaming about being and writing that small essay, reading those just touch your heart and being able to see what they're dreaming about. And it's important for us and the Smart 529 program to be able to emphasize that and get our, the parents and grandparents to realize, the aunts and uncles and whoever, ever, that the best gift that you could ever get Give your child or grandchild is a Smart 529 College Savings Program. And it really is a great contest. I want to talk a little bit more about those prizes because they're so significant for the children. And here's, um, uh, you can see a picture of you talking to some of the students right there at the kickoff. The winners of the When I Grow Up Essay Contest receive an investment in their future. There are 15 regional winners, as you said, selected. Each of the 15 receives $500 invested in the Smart 529 educational savings account, but one of those 15 regional winners is selected as the grand prize winner receives a total of $5,000 invested in a Smart 529. Tell us how that winner is selected because that's that one, the 15 regional winners, they are selected um, through judges, correct? Yeah, there's, correct? There's judges and they're blindly uh, judged, so the names are not attached to the essays, um, and that, that happens with a firm that does that. And then there's also that grand prize winner, and that's a random drawing, correct? Uh, that's a random drawing, but the exciting part about that, those 15 regional winners get to come here to the state capitol in Charleston here, and they get to uh, tour the, the, the museum here, the culture center. They also get to tour the capitol, do some things, and uh, participate in a day of activities here at the capitol. And, uh, and before they do that, we have a lunch form and we pull out the ground prize winner and we let the 15 regional winners read their essay. And that is always an exciting time. And then uh, we pick out the winner and it's a great celebration here at the Capitol. And $500 in a uh, 529 educational savings account toward some type of higher education, whether it's college or trade school, that's really a significant savings. And then the $5,000, of course, is a fantastic uh, bonus right there. But then the, the schools, they also win. $500, there's a $500 cash price for each school that produces a um, winner. So that's an incentive for the school to get their students involved as well. Well, absolutely, Gene, as you well know, the $500 that the school wins, I usually go and visit the school of the winner of the 500 regional winners, I mean, 15 regional winners that won the $500 and the $500 that the school get. And that's another great opportunity to promote the 529 plan and get other parents and grandparents participating in uh, saving for their children. And uh, it's just a great opportunity to really promote a program that's $2.7 billion 
529 program in the state. And, uh, you know, it's a dollar for dollar tax deduction on your state income tax incentive there. You never have to pay any federal tax as long as it's used for, or state tax as long as it's used for educational purposes. So it's just a fantastic program that we've started in the state of West Virginia that uh, benefits over, over 40,000 West Virginian families that participate in the program. Great information about the Smart 529 program in general, and we're going to talk a lot more about that a little later. I want to get back to the contest talking about, um, we were talking about the students and again, those 15 regional winners, but there's also an, another contest, and it's an opportunity for teachers to cash in on this as well. Teachers who use this contest in their classroom and write their own essay about how they use the When I Grow Up contest in their classroom, they have a chance to win a $2,500 Yes. cash prize and that is really just a great incentive for a teacher um, here in our state to be able to win a prize like that for doing this activity. Well absolutely and the teachers are starting to get involved in that because you know teachers really put a lot of their uh, resources into uh, in teaching in this state and making sure their their classroom students are taken care of and also it gives an incentive for them to be able to promote a writing skill for the, the students and be able to make a change there and they get to participate and win and be able to do something with their money as well. And uh, it's a lot of prize money. Since the contest began, the program has awarded 144,000 in Smart 529 scholarships to students around the state. It's got to make you feel really good to know that there are children in West Virginia benefiting from this contest and benefiting in a way that they're getting money invested in their 529 accounts that will hopefully grow um, as they become older and eventually go off to some type of schooling after high school. Well, absolutely, that's already happening since we, you know, the 13th year we've been doing the essay contest, but the 529 program has been out there and, and some of those students that have won those scholarships are now in college somewhere in the state or or, you know, they, they can go anywhere in the country to school, but we want them to go to West Virginia to school. And, uh, and it's good to be able to see those individuals already participating in, in uh, their award of the scholarship that they won to be able to go on to higher education. And that's part of the essay is they need to talk about how they're going to use higher education to achieve their dreams. Why do you feel that's an important message, especially at this age, kindergarten through fifth grade? Well, because we compete in a world of comedy in the state of West Virginia. And, they, and, and as soon as we can get children to start dreaming about what they want to be, their occupation, their job, uh, what, uh, so when they are getting prepared to go through all the way through high school to be able to go out in the real world to maybe figure out what they want to be and being able to get those students to start thinking about that at a very young age and as they get older and older. Now, it may change their mind, but the most important thing is it is already cemented in their uh, brain, so to speak, that I'm going to go to college or I'm going to go to Vogue Tech School and be a welder or be a, a, a mechanic or be a plumber because they pay pretty good jobs too, uh, sure. pretty good salaries as well. And so uh, it's important for us to be able to train the next generation that's going to run West Virginia. And a lot of it is about encouragement. I've heard you talk about that before, just encouraging the children to make those those dreams a reality, encourage them to start thinking about what they want to be when they grow up. It also is really a great way, a great prompt for families to start a discussion about saving money for the future. Um, talk a little bit about that message and what this contest does to help reinforce that message. Well, the most important thing there is that as I travel the state, I run into parents all the time that because of this essay contest, they would have never gotten in the 529 plan. But they got in the 529 plan after they realized uh, what their child had written about, what they were dreaming about. And that's very important. And, and that helps change the atmosphere of the education component of the state to be able to realize that we want our kids to dream high about going to college or going on to tech school or, and, and be able to change their life. And they don't realize that, but as they get older and get towards high school, they start realizing, hey, college is just around the corner. And uh, we have helped change that and get them prepared to, to go to college. 
and talking about the Smart 529 in general, it takes time to build up that savings. Uh, a little at a time helps. Um, getting started at an early age is helpful, but it's never too late to start investing. It's never too late to start investing. I tell people all the time, if you can find a better program, buy it, but you're not going to find a better program that offers a tax break, off, offers the incentive, the flexibility, the movement from child to child in, in your home, in your family, to be able to uh, get a t tax deduction for that. It's just, it, you just can't hardly beat the program. And the most important thing is you're investing in the future of the state. And it can be used not just for college. It, it started out um, being called the Smart 529 College Savings Program, but it's, it can be used for so much more than that. Well, absolutely. It can be used to, you know, to go on to get a master's degree, to go on to dental school or to uh, vet school or to, uh, to medical school. Or it can be used to go to techno education to be able to be a, a mechanic, as I said, a plumber or something like that, or a truck driver. Or there's so much that it can be used for. As long as it's used for educational purposes, you never have to pay any of that money back and you get the tax deduction for that. I want to come back to the contest. We're here. I'm talking with West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue about the Smart 529 College Savings Program and the When I Grow Up essay contest for 2020. Students have until February 28th to get their entries in for this contest. The rules and the essay application can be downloaded online. That's at W uh, that's at wvtreasury.com or you can go directly to smart529.com again smart529.com it's important to note that kids don't have to enter through their school while we encourage it they can enter on their own so parents can pick up an essay or go online and do this activity with their children well absolutely and that happens uh, quite often too and uh, you know we have three or four thousand applications every year for the contest the 15 regional winners so we encourage parents to participate in that you you know, like you said, go to our website, look at that, download it, and help your child write that essay, what they're dreaming about. We we'll also get a lot of entries from the school system. That's the most key of the program. But, you know, uh, we want all West Virginians to have an opportunity for their child or grandchild homeschool, whatever it might be, to be able to participate in the program. Yeah, so homeschooled uh, right. children, they are able to participate as well. Just have to be in that age range of kindergarten through fifth grade. That's correct. Private schools. All right. All right. Again, uh, we're talking about the Smart 529 When I Grow Up essay contest. The deadline is February 28th. Please get your entries in. Go to smart529.com for more information. But Treasurer, right now we're gonna take a quick break. When we return, we'll be switching gears from the When I Grow Up Essay Contest to other programs and functions of the Treasurer's Office as we take a look at what lies ahead. Stay with us, we'll be right back. No one's journey looks the same, but everyone's needs a start. Smart 529 College Savings Plans. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Along with the daily duties that must be done to keep the Treasurer's Office running smoothly, Treasurer Purdue says he and his staff are always looking for more efficient ways to perform their duties and keep the state's money safe. That includes an, an emphasis on technology updates and, of course, fraud prevention. That's another big part of the office. Treasurer Purdue is here with us today talking more about his office. And Treasurer, let's talk first about the cash management division. Of course, that's kind of the core function of your office. You manage more than $16 billion in state funds each, each year, and um, there are a lot of steps you need to follow to ensure that these duties are accomplished in a very efficient way. Talk a little bit about this division and, and what that means for you. Well, you know, like you, it's the cornerstone of the Treasurer's Office, the Bank of State Government, which is the People's Bank, $16 billion, as you said. And the most important thing is having the professionalism, the technology, the safety, and the checks and balances put in place to protect those assets. And we have done a marvelous job of doing that and being able to uh, really get the technology of any bank that people 
go to if you go to your local bank. Uh, the state bank is not hardly any different than that other than we don't cash checks. We're taking care of the people's money and moving it from agency to agency to make sure they can pay their bills and, and we uh, are able to make sure the accounts are secure. And so uh, that is very important to us in the treasurer's office, especially in cash management, to be able to protect the assets of the state. And I'm very proud that my staff has protected those assets since I've been state treasurer. We've never lost a penny. And I'm proud of that because it takes a lot of, of safety, a lot of crossing the T's and dotting the I's and transparency to be able to let the citizens of this state know their bank is the people's bank and that we are protecting their assets. Of course, um, that also includes the West Virginia Board of Treasury Investments. Uh, Short-term fixed income investments, you manage about $5.1 billion in those investments and uh, for local governments and other political entities as well as the state. Talk a little bit about this program and how it continues to grow as well. Well, the Board of Treasury Investments is uh, that we invest in for, the, for the state of West Virginia, the operational funds, also for county, city, and uh, governments and, and, and local, other local entities that uh, participate in that portfolio. We have, you know, and I'm very proud that for 13 straight years we've been, you know, been one of the best in the country in CAFR and also Standard & Poor's is rated as one of the, the top, uh, you know, uh, uh, triple uh, rated M in the market, that's in the market, uh, is to be able to do that. That says a lot about the treasurer's office and be able to work with county and city governments and the state to be sure that they are crossing the T's and dotting the I's and we're investing their money to get the best assets returned to them as well. All right. Yeah, a lot of great things going on in the Board of Treasury Investments. Um, safety, liquidity, two of your top, yes. top priorities there. Moving on to another investment program that we just talked about before the break, but I'm going to revisit it for just a minute, the Smart 529 College Savings Program. Um, again, uh, not just about college, but also higher education in general. That's grown to a $2.7 billion program. It now has $2.7 billion in assets currently. Why do you what do you attribute to that growth, and um, why do you continue to see success in this program? Well, I think uh, the success of the, the college savings program, when we started this program, I remember a lot of people said, this won't work in West Virginia. People won't save for their children and grandchildren's education. Well, we proved that wrong because people are very concerned about what is my grandchild going to be doing when they graduate from high school? What is my child going to be doing when they graduate from high school? We got, we, we got to stop our, our, our brightest and best to leaving the state, and we have to, to be able to encourage parents and grandparents that the best gift that you're going to ever give your child is to be able to invest in this program, to change their life, get them encouraged that they can go on to higher education or they go on to technical school. They will be prepared when they come out of high school to do what they need to do to, to, uh, to attain that dream that they want, they've been dreaming about being when they grow up. And, and that's what the 529 program is all about. And we're, you know, and. And having 47,000, about 40,000 West Virginians in that program says a lot about the parents and grandparents that invest in the program to help change those kids' lives. There's a new investment program. It's about two years old here oh. in our state. It's the WV ABLE program. And that is a program that allows individuals with disabilities to save and invest up to $15,000 annually without losing eligibility for many of their federal benefits. This program is really changing the landscape for uh, people with disabilities who want to um, be able to better manage their money. Well, absolutely. It's, it's kind of modeled after the uh, 529 College Savings Program. Uh, you know, the disability uh, uh, people of the state of West Virginia have a great opportunity to be able to invest in, in a little savings to, that will help protect that person later on in life to be able to help them survive and be able to stay in a home or be able to, to continue to, to do, do what they do and receive their benefits. And that's very important and we realize that here in the state. So we worked hard to start the ABLE program 
to be able to get that started. We only have about 400 participants in that program, but I believe it's going to continue to grow. It's just like the 529 college savings program. It took a while to get it off the ground, but after it gets started and people realize the importance of it, I, I really believe that it's going to be another great program in the state treasurer's office. Speaking of another great program, the West Virginia Retirement Plus Plan, that's a 457 supplemental retirement opportunity for uh, state employees, counties, city, municipalities. It continues to grow as well. Talk about this program because I know your office um, took over this program back in about 2006, I think. Yes. And um, it's really it's really taken off since then. Well, absolutely. The 457 program is like a 401k, but in the in the public sector, and uh, the and we're very proud of that program because it gives the opportunity for county, city, and state employees to put a little icing on the cake and have a little four. 457 program where they can invest in that and defer that for when they retire and that program is starting to really take off and you know I, I'm all about savings whether it's for a child or whether it's for yourself all the time I say the best thing you can do is save for yourself or save for your child's education and the 457 the 529 program the ABLE program all of those are great programs that will change people's lives and make West Virginia a better place. And, and talking about all those programs, because I know when people, uh, when they hear about the treasurer's office, they might not really um, c completely understand everything this office does. You talk about being the bank of state government as first and foremost, your duty as, as an elected official, but also um, you have a lot of these investment programs and with that comes financial education and empowerment. Yes. And I know that's something that you have really taken on in recent years as a, a personal um, thing to go out there and be able to talk to people about financial education and empowerment. I know you've done a lot on the national level with the National Association of State Treasurers in this, in this um, area. Talk a little bit about that. Well, that's one of the most uh, passionate things I've ever done because I realized pretty quickly when I became state treasurer, our kids were, couldn't even come out of high school and, and know how to balance a checkbook. They didn't realize really what was going on in financial education. So we started all the way back to get a life program and made it a little game. And now we're in, a, in 140 some plus middle schools in the state being able to promote financial education where they can go around and do a budget uh, they're, what their parents are putting together every month, trying to budget, or every week, sometimes almost every day, trying to budget that and being able to balance that budget. And so they're able to go around, buy the house, or rent the house, make the utility p payments, buy the car, be able to buy the groceries, go to the doctor, all the different things that parents do every day. They don't automatically go to the ATM machine and get that money out. It does not automatically come out. They have to have a budget. They have to know the money's there. And so it gives them an opportunity to do that. And they play the game, and then they usually go bankrupt. And then they come, we let them go to the Smart 529 College Savings Program table and make them realize that, well, if you've gotten an advanced degree in education, and be prepared for that, or if you got a, a technical education to, uh, in, in plumber or mechanic or something like that, and they got a new budget, and they go around again, and usually they're able to balance that budget. And, but the most important thing I've found out is that I travel the state, more parents come up to me and thank me for that program because kids are going home and talking to their moms and dads. And, t and they're saying, thank you for that program because, man, my son didn't know I paid $200 for those tennis shoes, or they didn't know I was paying that phone bill, uh, and they didn't understand that when the roof started leaking, it, I had to have money in a savings account to be able to fix it. And that's what it's all about, educating our young people that parents have a hard time too, and that they can help and understand what is going on in the real world, and that is very important to be prepared when they walk out of high school, they understand how to balance a budget and how to make a difference in their life. And finally today, I really wanted to touch on your unclaimed property program because that has right. been something that um, really, uh, it was in this office when you took over, but was non-existent. So 
Talk a little bit about what you did to make this program what it is and uh, the fact that you're returning money to individuals every year. Well, when we took over the unclaimed property when I became state treasurer, I realized there was $100 million sitting in the treasurer's office that was the people's money. And there was no effort really to go out and try to get that money back to the rightful owners of the state. We worked very hard on that. We modernized that uh, unclaimed property, put it up on the internet. We uh, was able to go to fairs and festivals, and we still do this, and try to uh, get people to look and see if they have unclaimed property. The best advertising we have is people finding other people's money. When we started publishing the list of unclaimed property, we got thousands of people calling in and saying, that's my uncle or that's my cousin, or that was my neighbor and they moved to such and such state. And we've been able to find record amounts of unclaimed property. Every year we, we do about 15 or, eight, 15 or $18 million a year in unclaimed property returns. But we, all, we are able to reach out and return that money and really change a lot of things in the state. And it is a great cornerstone for the people of this state it's the people's money, and I'm happy to be able to get it back to the right owners. And let's just talk about the fact that, um, you know, returning that money to rightful owners has been a process. As you said, you've really modernized that, that effort and now do letters online, newspaper advertisements, a lot of different ways you're doing outreach. Well, absolutely. You know, uh, we send out letters because people don't always see, and they'll get a letter in the mail. We'll trace the address down. And I have people walking up to me. I got this letter from me. He said I had an unclaimed property. And I say, that's probably true. You, all you have to do is call that 800 number or go to our website, and, and, and you can fill out the form, and you probably have an unclaimed property. And so that's how much technology is gone that we're able to reach out and find those people a lot easier. And, you know, I'm proud of that. And whether it's a life insurance policy that they didn't know about from their loved one, whether it's a CD, whether it's a bank account that they thought they'd closed out everything, all kinds of things are unclaimed property. That whether it's a deposit on, uh, on a rent or whether it's a deposit on a utility uh, bill or something like that. The most important thing is I tell people, you never know unless you go and look at, on the internet and not only will you probably find yourself, you're going to definitely find somebody you know. And that's what it's all about. And with that, I'll remind people they can go online to wvtreasury.com to look and see if you have unclaimed property. It's just possibly a click away. Treasure Purdue, thank you so much for being here today. Um, we appreciate you uh, going through what's up ahead for the treasurer's office. And remember the When I Grow Up contest is also running right now. You can get information on that contest and download the application at smart529.com. That's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can always get the latest news and information from the state treasurer's office. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, or just go directly to our website. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. Thank you.